Hey, I'm Ben from Modern Gram, and today we're going to do a Modern Gram valuation of Pulte Group Inc. So be sure to stick around to hear what I think of this company. So we have Pulte Group Inc. is the company name, of course, and the ticker is PHM. The current price as of recording is 5701 the sector is consumer cyclical, and the industry is home building and construction. And these items are what I find to be most important from the balance sheet. We have total current assets, total current liabilities, long-term debt, total assets, intangible assets, total liabilities, and outstanding shares. And all of these figures will come into play in this valuation. Now over here, we have a handy chart that shows the earnings per share in blue and the dividends in red. You can see that this company took a huge hit in the mid 2000s and then it got going again and it has been growing quite a bit since then. Looking at the details of the earnings here in red, you can see those negative earnings years. And over here, we have what I call the earnings per share modern gram. It is a weighted average of the last five years of earnings, putting the most weight on the current year and the least weight on five years ago. And that is how we get a more, uh, a smoother earnings cycle so that we can see the long-term trends in the earnings itself without seeing big swings in the business cycle. And you can see that that has been on the rise for several years. Now, over here, we have detail on the dividend side of things. We had four years of no dividends back when they were having negative earnings. They, they uh, suspended that dividend for a while. But since then, they brought it back and they have been growing it most years. They did not grow it in 2017. So it has not had a perfect record on dividends but it does have a dividend and the yield is um, has been around one percent between one and two percent that dividend payout ratio is rather low but that is because they are reinvesting a lot of their earnings in more construction now stage one is to determine if this company is suitable for the defensive or enterprising investor. And remember, the defensive investor is one who is not willing to do a lot of research into individual companies. So they have a stringent set of requirements that a company must pass in order to be considered for investment. Let's take a look. On the market cap, it has to be over $2 billion. Here we have $12.8 billion, so we pass that. Current ratio has to be greater than 2. Here it is 5.4 SIPs. Positive earnings for 10 straight years, we pass that. Dividend payments for 10 straight years, we pass that. Earnings growth, it has to be greater than th uh, one-third in the last 10 years using three-year averages at the beginning and end. We pass that as well. Then the price to earnings ratio has to be below 20. And here it is 7.24. And the price to book needs to be below two and a half. Here it is 1.44. So we pass that as well. And if you've been keeping score, we are up to seven. So it is suitable for defensive investors. And by default, it is then suitable for the enterprising investor who is willing to do more research, but because it is a defensive investor company. They're willing to jump on board as well. But for the record, it would pass all five of the enterprising investors tests as well. Now, if you are enjoying this video, be sure to take a moment to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and download the free valuation calculator found in the comments below. Stage two is a determination of the intrinsic value. And remember, the intrinsic value is different from the price. The two are independent. The value is what the company is worth, and the price is what the market is willing to pay at any given moment. And to calculate that intrinsic value, we use Benjamin Graham's formula from his book, The Intelligent Investor, which is value equals earnings per share times 8.5 plus two times the growth rate. And I've updated that to be the weighted average earnings, and so we have two variables to calculate the earnings and the growth. Now the earnings, again, I'm using a five year weighted average with the most weight going on the current year and the least on five years ago, we get earnings of 7.87. 
Taking that and the same figure from five years ago, we get a total growth in five years of 183%. Divide that by five and you get an average growth of 36.67%. And then we have a safety margin here because growth is such a key variable in this formula that it is important to make sure that you're not overestimating. So we actually have two safety margins that come into play with growth for this company. One is our typical 0.75 safety margin where we just reduce that estimate automatically by our safety margin. Then we also have the growth estimate uh, cap, and that is 15% because this is a growth value for, or for in perpetuity, and it is very unlikely that any company will grow greater than 15% in perpetuity. So we've got a cap there. So putting those figures in to calculate the value, we get the value to be 303 and 12 cents, which as you can see in this very handy chart, it is considerably more than the current price of 5701. This bar is much bigger than that bar. And with the details over here, the price is only 18.81% of the intrinsic value. So it gets an undervalued rating in the modern gram system. Then looking at a few other things, one is the net current asset value. That should be a floor for your value, and that is 3605. So it's trading above that floor, but not all that much above. So that is a, a thing to keep in mind. Modern gram value based on 3% growth would be $114 and 0% growth. If the company didn't grow its earnings at all for the rest of time, it should be worth 6692. And the market implied growth rate, if you put price in for value and solve for growth, you get a negative growth. So the market thinks this company will be shrinking over time. If you disagree with that and you think it will grow, then it might be a way of seeing this as undervalued currently. The modern gram grade. This is a system of looking at companies across industries and taking into account several different factors. So first of all, we have investor suitability. It gets two points for being suitable for the defensive investor, one point for being a good price to value, one point for trading below its gram number, Zero for trading or for not having long-term dividend growth. Zero for having a low dividend yield. Half a point for trading below its industry average price-to-earnings ratio. Zero points for trading below its net current asset value. So it gets a total of four and a half points, which is enough to get an A- minus grade. Stage three. Next, if you've determined that it is suitable for your investor type, and you've determined that it is undervalued, then the next step is to do further research to determine if it is suitable for your individual portfolio, taking into consideration uh, diversification goals or your own investing goals. And only you can make that determination. Looking at the net current asset value, again, that should be a floor to your value because that is the amount of cash that would be left over to distribute to each shareholder if they took the cash, the current assets, and paid off all of the company's liabilities. That's how much cash would be left. So the company should never be trading below that number. The Graham number formula, that is a formula derived from those defensive investor requirements to give a number to them. And here we get a gram number of 8188. And again, it's trading below that. So it could be another indicator for you that this is an, an undervalued company. The PEMG formula, the price to earnings, remember, is only 7.24. The current ratio is 5.4 SIPs. The PB ratio is 1.44. Dividend yield is 1.08%. And there are SIPs years of dividend growth. Stage four is now to do a little bit of technical analysis. If you've gotten to the point where you've decided that you are interested in this company and you want to add it to your portfolio, the next step would be to try to time it to maximize your profit. And that's where technical analysis can come in because at this point, you want to pay attention to what the market is doing with the price and what momentum there might be. Here you can see that it has been on an upward trend 
and it has been trading above its moving average. So it's been moving up. We're in the daily view, by the way. And then you can look down here too to the momentum. This is the uh, relative strength index. That's pretty high. It's pretty close to being overbought. And in fact, it probably was a couple of weeks ago. So that would be something to really keep in mind there when you're looking at it. But I think it might have potential to come back down a little bit and give a better buying opportunity. But you never quite know with the market. It could go either way. But anyway, those are things to look at and keep in mind as you try to minimize your risk when you're entering the market. But anyway, that's it for now. Make sure to click on the video on the screen now. It should be another video that another analysis that you will really enjoy. And thanks for watching and I will catch you next time. Take care.